Hey, what's up, good people? How are you doing? Bash Matuma back again with the Uganda News Podcast. And uh, this time around, I am having actually a very great time. It's the Eid weekend. And um, you know what it's all about. Celebration and food. Great, great food. Pilau every single place. Chicken. Beautiful eating, man. It's just crazy and great. And um, I hope uh, the Muslim brethren are having a great Eid. Eid Mubarak to you all. And um, to every other person that recognizes the, the holidays, I hope you're really, really having a great, great time. And uh, I'd like to dive straight in into the biggest stories of the week. And number one that's made that's made headlines is Ziggy Wayne's death. Uh, Ziggy Wayne's very sad death really uh, shocked the nation. And uh, it all started with social media posts of photos that circulated around with captions about Ziggy Wayne being tortured badly. Yeah the caption stated that he lost his eye that it was plucked out by the people that tortured him and uh, that his back was burnt seriously with a flat iron and that he lost two of his fingers they were cut off like atrocious torture like really sad ways of torturing a human being and everyone was actually quiet about this yeah because it was just saddening yeah, and the silencing i would say but uh, police was hesitant also to make a statement but after his death they actually made a statement and according to police uh, post-mortem uh, they say that ziggy wine was actually never tortured according to police he wasn't tortured and his fingers were not cut off they were just broken according, uh, after the accident that he had here he was involved in a border accident and what police says is that he knocked down someone and he fell into the trench and broke two of his fingers and uh, he lost n- not lost his eye but injured his eye according to police he did not lose the eye he just injured it and secondly he did not lose his fingers so they were not cut off they were just injured in the accident and uh, about the ban n- nothing much was talked about it but um, um maybe it he was banned by the exhaust thing because it burns that motorcycle thing no one can be anyway sure but uh that was it about ziggy Wayne. but opposition politicians no single one of them really believed this police story none of them believed them because they believe that police is good at faking up stories according to them they say police fakes up stories and uh, they don't believe they say that uh, ziggy wine was tortured because he was part of people power that's what they say but you would say uh ziggy wasn't even a top dog in people power he wasn't known he wasn't a threat yeah he wasn't in any way a threat if you might think of it but uh, someone else told me that well you don't uh, you don't have to say just because he wasn't a threat he deserved to be tortured and killed but well there's no proof that he was tortured that's the first thing there's no proof that he was tortured and uh anyone that's building the other side of the story should bring proof about it because police has decided to bring it out and say really the guy wasn't tortured he was uh, just involved in an accident and people like uh dr kiza basically came out and said uh uganda police no longer has the more the more authority to talk about things like this because they've faked up evidence many times um in situations just to prove their own agenda uh, or to prove their own narrative so really this time around even though they might be talking the truth or not it no longer makes sense and no one will believe them and that's understandable well uh, one friend of mine has suffered a lot kanari mugume he's a journalist with nbs tv so he was trying to cover the same scene that police said uh, is where the accident happened the ziggy wine accident so he went and tried to cover it and there's a photo of him with a tape measure trying to measure the gutter that's making rounds and people insulting him and calling him a government poll and calling him things of the sort that he's being paid to to spin stories to say ziggy wasn't killed but 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 bambi he's just doing his job and i really think he's not doing anything wrong and uh, even though people kept on saying that the same woman that was one of the uh, the the witnesses that canary interviewed at the scene that the same woman was actually a police woman people were saying that and many had believed it including me truth is the police later arraigned that witness and arraigned the, the police woman that was being called that witness two of them in the same photo so there was proof that actually that person was a witness and she wasn't a police officer and uh, people like patrick kanyomozi kept on dissing canary sadly but uh things of 
they just went out like that and andrew mwenda is one of the only few journalists that uh, weren't believing the, the the other side and were on the side of the police in this entire thing they were backing the police story and what andrew mwenda says he is very very disappointed with ugandan journalists because most of them were backing the opposition side with the way they were reporting and what Mwenda said that he did it did not even take him a half a day or even an hour to get the real story from Mulago Hospital because according to the hospitals, uh, their story actually matches what police says about the accident. Yeah, that the guy had an accident and he was rushed to a hospital. The only reason why opposition uh, people would say that um, Ziggy Wine was tortured and killed is because of an argument that Ziggy's sister says that um, when she had just reached a doctor or one of the workers in the emergency room at Mulago Hospital told her that when Ziggy was brought in, he said he was beaten. Yeah, that Bam Kupie, they beat me up. And after that word, he did not say anything. He just stopped talking. Like he couldn't talk anymore. But uh, that word wasn't said straight to Ziggy's sister. She says it was said to the person that was working in the emergency room. And remember, when someone is delirious, you can't be sure whether whatever they're saying is real or true. But according to Ziggy's sister, yeah, she says Ziggy said he was tortured or beaten. That's what he said. And uh, this entire thing is just a roller coaster. It's hard to believe who is saying the truth and who is not because everyone is trying to spin the story to their own advantage. Uh, first off, like Bessie just said, uh, the police had has faked up a lot of evidence in many situations, so it's hard for people to believe them even when they're saying the truth. And also, it's hard to believe people like uh, Bobby Wine or other opposition politicians because normally they also politicize every single situation, uh, be it political or not. So it's hard to believe who is telling the truth. But well, that's the entire thing. Uh, that's how it's happening. And uh, secondly, Ari Namuiru Dame. Ari Namuiru is actually making headlines right again, and it's making me very happy. Um, this time around, she's in the headlines because uh, she has she, she made a cover for John Black's song, which is called Mechanica. Well, um, any '90s kid out there, if asked who their favorite Ugandan musician is, they will definitely either say Ari Namuiru or Juliana Kanyomozi. Yeah? That's what they'll say. But um, uh, these old two friends actually uh, in their former IJ band they were ruling the Uganda music scene even after separating and everyone going their separate ways they kept on ruling Ugandan music they were producing very beautiful music and they were the divas of the era from around the early 2000s to uh, the late 2010 I think around there after that decade yeah when Ready and Weasel kicked in that decade that's when Irene Nambiru and Juliana Kanyomozi had stopped being so vibrant and stuff but throughout they were fire and uh, kiddos of this era might not know why we love uh, Juliana Kanyomozi or Irene Nambiru because they've grown up listening to Shiba it's understandable they listen to Shiba Karunji and they don't know what it means for someone to sing really with a beautiful sweet voice like a nightingale or whatever that is but uh, Irene Nambiru's cover of John Black's Mechanica really proved to them why the earlier generation than them really loved Irene Namobiru. She really sang very well in this viral video. Uh, it's more of a studio session that she had with Daddy Andre, the guy who produced John Black's song. Yeah, and um, Irene is seen belting out all those notes that she was famous for in songs like Nkuwechi. And uh, however, this time around she was singing in John, John's Black uh, lyrics anyway and the video has actually received very very positive feedback with many teens sharing it incessantly and bombarding the song but uh, social media comment sections with praises and um, on her vocal prowess and how she has made john J john black's voice really clearer and how she has made his obscure words clearer to them because as you know john black is the kind of guy who sings real words he's not like the likes of latinum who just sing gibberish but john black actually sings real words but first off he sings in very deep luganda uh, lyrics that might not be easy to understand the words are tough not the, the words that are not normally used by the normal speaker that's the first thing and secondly uh, his english words too 
he he sings with that very deep voice you might hardly uh, corroborate what he's trying to sing but in the end it's very beautiful and melodic and that's why he is a hit right now in Kampala John Black is the biggest male artist there is no doubt about that the likes of Fikfa Maker are already on the sloping route John Black is just rising day by day no single male Ugandan artist is hotter than John Black at this particular moment. So Irene actually did it great to do a collab with John Black and I'm glad that her YouTube channel is finally getting the traffic it deserves. Like people are actually taking her more serious now they are back and checking out her videos. Man, it was really hurting when I checked out Irene's YouTube and I found that uh, the channel didn't even have uh, great traction because some of the videos that were there, official videos had less than 1000 views. Irene Namovi was such a diva, it was painful, man, it's painful how this this generation doesn't appreciate legends, it's very painful, but um, she's back and even though uh, all her songs are, the older songs are not on that YouTube channel, she created it about two or three years ago, why? Because well, back in the day, YouTube wasn't a big deal, at the time when they were big, YouTube wasn't so much of a big deal, so uh, their platforms weren't about putting music on youtube you just give it to a friend who had a youtube channel or a producer or a director or whoever had a youtube channel as one who would like do such things for example back then there's a one ugandan uh, video director live alone sasha vibes and whoever of this era uh, adam juma adam juma was one of the best ugandan video directors and he was working in dar es salaam i'm not sure Dar es Salaam or Nairobi, not so sure, but he was working out of Uganda, so uh, he would uh, produce or videos for people and upload them to his YouTube channel. But that's what back in the day those guys used to do. So musicians never had YouTube channels, and it's not just Adam Juma. Various other people in the music industry would upload. Uh, music to their own channels. Yeah, that's how it used to be. So Irene's channel is new. And uh, I'm glad that this time around uh, people have actually noticed her and I hope she uses this chance to produce new music such that she capitalizes on this attention. Well, Afrima awards and nominations are back. And this time around um, we've been nominated in various categories as usual, apart from one unique one that we've not been seeing a lot, that's uh, uh, the category of the TV or radio personality of the year. and uh, it's. Sanyu FM's James Onen, aka Fatboy, who has been nominated, and it's a happy day actually. And uh, Fatboy actually posted on his Facebook that let's make Uganda great again. And this year's Afrima Awards, I am honored to be among nominees that include Best Male East Africa, Eddie Kenzo, Best Male East Africa, Shiba, sorry, Best Female East Africa, Shiba, Best Female East Africa, Vinka, Best Female East Africa, Juliana Kanyomozi, Best Female East Africa, Rema, and the Best African Dancer, Ghetto Kids, Best Videographer of the Video Director of the Year, Sasha Vibes, and uh, of course the radio tv personality of the year james onen well he's been nominated against big names from all over africa including tanzania's lil omi and uh, we just hope our, our very own james onen wins this because well when it comes to numbers we really can't compete but uh, he's a legend and um, a big issue in this and there's also mzazi willy tuva who is a bigger brand so we really just hope we can win anyway and uh he kept on saying let's go to the afrima website and vote uganda all the way for the above categories featuring ugandans well uh, another bigger story is the fact that Anne kansime is proud to have paid her dowry well as you might know a few days ago Anne kansime started trending all over the place for the fact that she said in one of her youtube videos that she paid her own bride price that she literally gave money to a joke for a joke to pay her own bride price wow crazy crazy stuff and uh, she has been trolled a lot everywhere and she decided to uh, upload a new video to her youtube channel and this time around she said she is not stressed at all she's not worrying at all about that entire thing and she's happy she doesn't care what people think she's not afraid to say what she said because she is trying to inspire people and to lift up people by telling her own story and uh, she also said that uh, most people including ugandans they believe that famous people do not have a private life or they, they they are not human like them or they are angels or something of the sort and she argued that actually famous people are normal people 
that go through the same issues that we go through as others that are not that famous yes and uh, she said she moved on and she's in love with someone who respects her and she's no longer desperate and uh, she has reached out to parents to stop pressuring children to get married because it lands them into very desperate situations like the one she got landed into and uh, well i'll tell you a story about typical ugandan parents because usually they will never like you to ever mention that you're in a relationship when you're still studying never mention whether you have a boyfriend or girlfriend even if you're 18 and you're in senior six and you just uh or, or you're 19 and you're in your first year at campus they will never like to hear anything about a relationship because they feel their children shouldn't be deterred from the from the realities of education and life but but and wait for this plot twist right after graduation like this they will expect you to get married straight away after graduation get a job get married if you delay like three years or four they will begin getting insecure about the entire thing and asking you what's up what's wrong yeah and uh, this entire thing is what makes people get desperate to make their parents happy they try to rush up and uh, try to get married or something like that and that's what uh Kansime is saying that parents should stop pressuring their children to get married because they make them land into bad situations and i'll tell you how crazy it is to get married because it's expensive you'd wonder why why then uh, did Kansime decide to pay the dowry maybe they were pressuring her to get married but did, did it mean she should pay her dowry i'll give you some crazy stories still about how expensive it is to marry in uganda first there are like four steps of marrying in uganda first you'll have to pay dowry or bride price now bride price for areas for example in uh, in in kampala or central uganda where i come from in buganda it's not so expensive so it's normally joined together with the other parties so it's not so expensive but in places like western uganda where kansime comes from um, and most especially in the bahima communities you'll be asked to give up cows about 15 cows i think that might be the minimum or average 15 cows and not normal cows they might ask you for fresians now a fresian cow would be about 4 million uganda shillings or 5 million if you do not have those cows you'll have to multiply that money into cash and pay it up before you think of anything else before you think of even visiting you have to pay up that money now 5 million when you multiply by by 15 eh, you're close to 85 million or something of the sort you're already paying all that money yes for just the dowry or bride price all those frisian cows imagine yes that's what you'll be paying up mm -hmm. then after paying up that money what else are you paying uh -huh. after paying that money you have to do kuchala what we call visiting uh, now kuchala you'll go and meet about um 10 or 20 family members yeah parents uh, sisters friends and family just a few meeting them up and you have to spend some more money you'll spend like two million maybe on the things you'll buy for that day then after that you'll do a kwanjula or what they call kuhinjira in the west in western uganda now on the kwanjula you'll spend another 100 million why because you'll have to pay for the tents service providers like food catering uh, uh mcs music systems videography and photography uh um, groceries what all that stuff a cow yeah goat meat to be eaten like a, a big thigh of a uh, of a cow that's beef for, for the Baganda groceries and all that stuff you'll have to pay for that that's for the kwanjula then after the kwanjula you now do the real wedding now no single person likes their child to be taken up by a broke person then if you're broke you'd rather go and get money from your friends and pull up a very expensive reception and make it look like you were a very rich man and it's fine to them as long as the wedding looked rich you can live in abject poverty for the next 20 years the parents don't care anymore yeah whether you rent it doesn't matter but you have to have a lot of money to push up a great glamorous wedding you have to have a great reception which will also total to something like a minimum of 50 million yes because you'll need things still like photography and stuff just the deco some people do deco of 50 million deco only 50 million for just the wedding deco imagine now before you think you even think of the food people are going to eat yeah booking that place it has to be a beautiful venue not any random place so you'll go to, to a place like uma oh dear lord weddings are really a big big deal so you'll spend about 300 million or 400 million on just a wedding 
Mm. That's a that's a good house that you would have bought you and your loved one to live in. So yeah, that's the pressure that people are subjected to all the time and that's how they fail. Now in Luo tribes for example where and Kansimis X comes from uh, in Luo tribes like Acholi, Langi and Alur actually the girl is counted the amount they've spent to the girl is counted literally from the time she was born to the time she finished school now if you're unlucky and she actually okay not, not unlucky but if you if the person you like she is low yeah and she finished high school and she actually even went ahead to get a degree at campus dear lord you're going to pay money for all those things that is what we mean very expensive all those guys you'll spend a lot of money so it's really a hard thing for someone to be pressured to marry it's not something simple and that's why people end up doing bad decisions but yeah that's it but um after that uh Kansime decided to loosen up and thank people for watching uh, east africa's got talent where she is as a as an mc and uh, really we've been re- represented very well as uganda at east africa's got talent there's that dance and acrobatic group all eyes on us it's great and there's that seven year old girl lena kagere she really really represented us very well she's a great singer she sang very beautifully like a night in jail that's all i can say and uh, we are very happy for her and we hope she goes really higher because she got a red buzzer and she got straight into the semi-finals of this episode of the east africa's got talent very very happy moment for ugandans and uh well on the other side weed weed is legal not legal in that sense anyway weed has been legalized in uganda as a medical uh art form or a medical treatment so medical cannabis or marijuana is legal in uganda but it's not being grown by any any person that finds liberty or land to grow no it's being grown by specific people that have licenses big companies that grow medical cannabis there's an israeli companies and there's also this um industrial hemp company yep and we've seen atlas uh, being arraigned together with the government with, with the president at a presser or at an event that was uh, more of like a launch and if you don't know atlas atlas is that guy who who sang he was a rapper that came up and became famous from uh, jose chameleon's song called vumilia if you remember at the beginning of vumilia uh, i it, it starts with someone uh, like doing some sort of spoken word poetry they say hate is the new love they really hate us but they really love us it's been so many years camille yon uh, then camille begins to na vumilia wana tuangalia tunaendelea bila kuzingatia or something of the sort so um that was atlas he's a rapper but um he's actually gotten that chance you know if at all you're a big guy in such a project then you're going to be rich at least it's going to be rich trust me you and according to their website of this urban hemp or industrial hemp thing they say that um it was founded and legally incorporated in 2012 within the laws of the republic of uganda and uh, industrial hemp is a non-profit organization company that grows and processes medical cannabis or hemp and uh, it's licensed and supervised by the ministry of health and other responsible government agencies and departments like uganda police force in uganda and other companies primarily engaged in the growing and development of marijuana cannabis and medical marijuana and cannabis products along alongside sativa for industrial purposes in uganda so well that's all for the for the cannabis and weed but remember weed is still illegal in uganda for the fact that it's being grown by rich people doesn't mean it is legal so please be careful and uh, secondly it's legal for medical purposes not for recreational purposes so it's it has to be administered by a doctor not any other person and this actually reminds me of a friend of mine who is in canada she told me that actually weed is now very legal in canada and it's being sold by the government itself the government sells you weed like you can just make an order and say i want 10 grams of weed okay 10 grams might be something so whatever i want a kilogram of weed and you make an order and a government deliverer will come to your door and give it to you and you'll pay the only thing is that it's more expensive because the government actually taxes you more than when you get it from other people so in canada the government actually sells the weed to the people yeah that's how legal it is in canada and uh well finally i've heard about felicita who is a, a rapper taking over fresh kids chance she's a little girl with a very sick flow she's about the same age with fresh kid but she has a very sick flow and a serious rhyme i don't know whether she writes her own lyrics but they're really deep 
and uh, i enjoyed one of the videos she did a pro promotional video for douglas luanga's purple party yeah that it was an advert for douglas cats cats is one of the guys that uh is not supportive of uh, young kids being made into musicians he says he doesn't have a problem with fresh kids singing because fresh kid was already famous yeah so it was a chance that he, he couldn't let go but he doesn't support other younger kids being pushed into the music industry while they are young that they should first study and things of the sort and uh, well not to mention how he actually hates it to see some, some people who are not talented sing, singing people like fresh daddy he says now that one should never even dare singing but uh, his co-presenters like the likes of Zahara Toto and Douglas himself, they asked MC Cass that you guy, you say you don't like kids to sing, but you became famous at a very young age and that's why actually people, these MC Cats, they, they call him old, old that he's so old, but he doesn't grow old yet he's very old. But the fact is MC Cats actually became famous at a very young age, he started working on TV, on um, wbs tv before it got defunct he started he started by working there when he was a very very young guy he was so young so that's that's why he got so famous at a very young age yeah but you wonder why he doesn't like others to become famous at a very young age anyway uh that's all from me today i hope you love this entire thing and if you really loved it please show me some love thumbs up and everything you can and uh thanks to everyone that's listening to this either on youtube or afripods you're the greatest you're gonna do podcast everywhere please check me out on instagram at bash mutumba sayonara